and one like few questions that i had were specific to researchers because a lot of people listening to these particular podcasts are maybe master student phd students or maybe on the transition of like involved into research but trying to learn more about the latest techniques right yeah. and a typical question that normally a lot of these young people have is like how do they really how do they really know for themselves if they are up for a phd or not and the reason i ask this question is because you have a long long uh, history of being involved with research like you said you you did your master's thesis you did phd you you were also a postdoctoral fellow and now you are a professor where you would be hiring other phd students so you know what are the expectations of academia in general from a student and also from the other aspect of um, uh, thesis perspective so mm -hmm. how would you say what what does really a phd entail and what are the things a person should know so that he or she knows that okay i'm up for a phd versus phd is not something for me yeah um that's a good question let me start by talking a little bit about how i approach this decision uh, through the years uh, yeah. and then i can maybe try to generalize that a little bit but like my journey has been i wasn't sure when i was doing my masters if i really wanted to do a phd uh, so uh, of course i was interested in like machine learning its applications and so on and was generally like a good student but i wasn't sure if i wanted to spend like 5 years plus on a phd uh, which is an intense journey and uh, so on so i think the way i try to come out of it is just do more research and see if i enjoy doing it like i think uh, while doing my masters i was like yeah i'm just going to give this my best and see if i like doing this spending my time on this like spending uh, several hours on this right or of course several days and months but also <laughs> like do i enjoy uh, spending several hours at one shot on this what i'm doing right and also even after my masters i wasn't very sure so i joined ibm research i worked both with new york uh, lab as well as like labs in india uh, to kind of get a better sense of like how does the research work in industry like am i still enjoying doing it or was it just like a one project wonder where you know the first project i was excited about it and then i just hated afterwards right so i think i tried to test myself at like multiple times and on multiple projects just to see if that is something that i really enjoy and i think a comparison point for me was uh trying to see if i enjoyed it more than we say like coding mostly right like you know uh, more kind of uh being an engineer for example right like uh, or like other things that i could see what others were doing around me of course like this is all a bit of extrapolation uh but yeah i think just kind of uh, i was a skeptic for like at least 2 to 3 years and then at the end of i think 2 to 1/2 years i was like yeah i think i enjoy this enough to sort of go ahead do a full fledged like phd uh, you know get that and then you know come and like sort of uh, do research at like yeah with more control that i could have uh, while doing research so i think i took my time and basically just did a bunch of projects work with a bunch of people to get to know if i really enjoy the process right um and one a few things that i have sort of like picked up on the way maybe if i can even try and generalize that so few things that would be important is i think this probably just generally for anything in life maybe not even just research right so when things are really bad in every which way like from external world's perspective right like maybe you are not getting something that you wanted to get like whether it's and admit to a university or something else or a fellowship right whatever things are going wrong in the external world or you know you are not liking the you know like kind of the people that you are working with it could be anything right uh, so when things are going wrong in the external world can you come back to your room or your office or whatever and then enjoy thinking about this if the answer to that is yes then i think you have hit a sweet spot with respect to the career that you are picking right of course again this is not like you know there is no way everybody will feel like magically happy with like lot of stuff going wrong around but a general rule of thumb is roughly if things are not so in your favor externally like other people other incidents other things in the external world 
but this is something that keeps you going a little bit right again don't expect 100% productivity all the time of course external things will influence your mood and so on but like on some level you still are like oh i'm still glad that i get to think about this right if that is the state of mind that you are in i think you have hit a sweet spot with respect to career uh, that's that's like a general uh, thing that i have noticed as i went through and i've seen other people also go through their lives right um now coming to research so is basically ascertaining if you enjoy research through different experiences is important because otherwise you'll never know sure you can look at other people all that but i don't think that will give you enough information about whether you will like doing something so the best way to know if you like doing a research or like doing research or if you want to do a phd is to just do a lot of research projects and that will tell you you'll get the answer automatically you don't have to look for other people's validation or opinions or anything right uh the second thing is i think uh, perseverance and like persistence is like extremely important in research and it's actually very important in a lot of other things in life too but uh i think that is something that ability to be just resourceful and like just be persistent can take you a long way in the sense that you should almost i think you'll also learn nobody comes into a phd knowing everything so don't think of it as like yeah if i don't have this like i'm not a good fit but generally right so if you see a problem you should not think of it as oh so hurdle that's it i'm done like uh, there is nothing for me to do so that is it's also going to be a problem in life if you have that mindset so i think eventually everybody learns that right but if you come across an obstacle a problem instead of looking at it as okay this is insurmountable my life is going to be over here like this has destroyed everything that is rarely ever the case with anything so just kind of looking at it as here is a problem it's not a good situation but like what can i do about it right like you know can i try this can i try that what is the easiest to try like just kind of always having that like resourcefulness or like a solution based mindset can take you a very long way in a phd program and also just generally in life and just being persistent about it like just because you failed once does not mean that's the end of the road because when one incident happened a lot of things have a effect on it or an influence on this so it could even be due to external factors or whatever so if you are interested in something you should probably give it another try right like few tries or like just kind of being a bit persistent would also be very helpful in research because a lot of time experiments fail things don't go the right way at the first shot so you always have to find other ways to work around it so i think just being resourceful having uh, some perseverance uh, and also just kind of putting yourself through multiple things and seeing oh am i enjoying this and asking yourself that question uh can be i think really helpful because uh yeah i think this is probably also just generally good for most things in life and not just research yeah yeah i i really love the idea i i really love the idea and definitely connected to few of the points over there and i think uh like cool two key takeaways i think for the first being like like you said uh it's not something that you would have 100% satisfaction on the very first yeah. point but if you're enjoying if you're feeling comfortable then yeah. you are good to explore you won't have the first outburst of 100% satisfaction right away Yeah. and yeah i i really also love the idea it's like you have need to have a solution based approach it's right. like you don't like if the give up mentality would be something that's a much more major factor than yeah research would be something really hard i think in that case so yeah i really love that idea and uh one other like one last question just based on again a student's perspective is what do you think really counts for a good phd thesis because uh, i like like you said like 5 years is a very long amount of time and a lot of people yeah. or even for masters thesis i think in, this is in general for any thesis a lot of students like us struggle a lot understanding what is really a good thesis that can really pan out well even if i go in future in the academia or industry or whatever path i'm going later on how like did you have any kind of brute force based uh, failures over there that you tried and you 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 realized uh, sometime later that okay if i did this on like if i planned this on my thesis that would not turn out to be a very good uh, thesis in general 
or maybe your advisor pointed it out very correctly on time like how would you define a good thesis and what would you what would be the typical pitfalls you would advise that okay don't do these kind of things or maybe just be aware of these kind of pitfalls in general while trying to think of your thesis yeah so i would not look at it as a thesis because at least uh, you know uh, i can talk a little bit about computer science phd's in the united states right ultimately over time thesis is becoming more and more like you just staple all the papers that you have written so i think thesis as a document is more or less about yeah sure if you have five papers six papers whatever some k number of papers you will just staple everything you will try to write a coherent story and that's a thesis right but i would like to comment more on like the process of a phd right so what what can we think of as a successful phd uh, i mean successful is wrong word but like maybe you know in some sense good. you're asking what's a good phd right again there is yeah. no one size fits all answer but i think the main things that people should focus on during their phd is a two one is learning all the things that would require you to become uh, that would that would be required of you to become a good researcher in your area right so if it's an ml person you better spend some time during the phd your phd getting a good handle on linear algebra probability optimization uh, statistical learning theory machine learning all of those because later on as you move into other things you get more and more busy and you will not have the time to like do all this right uh, so i think that is the key factor that that's a very important piece that often i think students ignore they just say okay i'm in a rush to like write this one paper which is also important it it can't be like you have done no research for 2 years and you are just like reading and reading and reading right so that's also not a healthy approach some balance needs to be there but uh, in a phd the two important things are you need to be comfortable with all the basics that are required to do good research in your area right and the mm-hmm. second thing is you also need to be comfortable as you get to the end of your phd to do independent research like you should be able to come up with problems you should be able to see what a good problem looks like you should be able to like you know sort of like start research on your own or initiate it without other people like prompting to you that here is a good problem here is a good solution you should be able to like figure those out yourself especially as you are getting to the end of the phd right so these i think mm-hmm. are the main goals of it are uh, now coming to the point of the topics and so on obviously like i think you know your topic would influence like how much in demand you are by the time you graduate and so on but those are i would say this is like saying okay is there a way that i can try to optimize my life in such a way that i win a turing award right like no there isn't <laughs> um so that's i think a question that has so many other things that come into play that you might start with a great topic that is very popular and by the end of 5 years nobody might care about it anymore right um yeah. so that's where i think having like a one foot each on being a little realistic at the same time adding your own interests in the picture would be helpful because if you are very excited about something even if like the demand for that is like slightly low by the time you graduate you will still stand out because you would have probably done great work in it you know you would you will find some or the other venues to like have a livelihood with it and so on right so i i think it should be some kind of a combination of what will realistically still be useful and also you know uh, like your interest right and one more thing i just want to point out is if you are strong in your basics you can also switch easily to adjacent areas it's not like you know yeah. oh sure like i've done this piece let's say i've only done image saliency maps in my phd like now i'm stuck nobody cares about saliency maps. if that's a hypothetical scenario that is usually not really uh, the case that would happen because in the process you would have picked up a bunch of things about ml learning theory this that all of that now you can easily work on some other kinds of things using the same skills right so that's why i think it's important to get your basics right so that you can easily switch from one area to the other because these fields are also very rapidly evolving these days and like you know even like maybe 5 years from now we all might be working on very different kinds of problems than we are doing today and that's okay that is very possible 
uh, especially given how fast things are moving. And the only thing that can save you in that uh, state, which is likely to occur anyways, is that if you have your basics right, you can do that switch faster than others, right? Uh, so yeah, that, that's helpful. So I would say like getting your basics right, getting the confidence that you can write your papers, you can come up with problems, your solutions. Uh, being able to communicate is also a key thing in research, which people often ignore, right? Because at the end of the day, a lot of research is just brainstorming. I mean, sure, you'll go and like, you know, code, all of that is there. But like a lot of research is about you've done something, you've got something, you need to be able to communicate that well to your advisor or to your collaborators or to other people so that then they can give you good suggestions. If you're not good at communicating, then you might have the best thing that you have seen with a result. But if you don't say that, well, nobody is going to be able to understand it and they might ignore it and move on to other things, right? So I think communication... Uh, basics being solid, uh, you know, just being an independent researcher. These are key traits that people should work on quite a bit during their PhD. And these things will not come out of vacuum. They'll come out of spending time reading things, getting uh, courses done, uh, and also publishing a lot, right? Doing a lot of research papers, doing a lot of research projects, and also giving talks, uh, putting yourself in like different teams, talking to different kinds of people, all of that will give you just more practice is basically what helps you with all of this, right? And in terms of picking the topic, usually advisors can give you a reasonable idea. Again, nobody can predict the future, but like they can point you to like thesis topics that are likely to be interesting, even like a few years ahead from now. Um, and yeah, like those, you can take those suggestions. You can also put in your own interests when you pick a topic because that is extremely important. Otherwise, it's hard to spend the kind of time that people typically spend on research if you don't like a topic. Um, so I think these aspects should hopefully, uh, you know, kind of avoid some of the problems around like things going completely out of uh, fashion in some sense. And I, I, I honestly don't think that's such a big issue because again, as I said, you know, if your skills are strong and if you realize in your third year, oh, I've started working on like these approaches and like, you know, now there is less and less work on it. There is not too much to contribute newly. If you have the basics right, you can easily start reading new kinds of papers, pick it up and like, you know, pivot, right? So it's yeah. not that tricky. So that's where I think uh, skills become very critical. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I really love the bundle of uh, thoughts that you presented over here. And one, uh, one thing I definitely resonated is, well, like last year when I started my PhD, one of the biggest concern I had was because I'm majorly working with Mayo Clinic, which is a, a very popular hospitals over here. And I was concerned that if at the end of my PhD would I be too much focused on medical imaging or maybe the biomedical aspects of AI, and I won't be able to scale uh, these things uh, across other disciplines of computer science. And one of the key key things I learned very quickly was when we are doing PhD, we are learning to do research. We are not, not just learning the topic, but if, if you rather focus on doing the research, then you can scale your ideas. Like you said, you can make the shifts very easily. It's not going to be specific to just one topic. So, uh, yeah. but but I really love the idea, like how you framed that whole idea. I'm, I'm sure like this is like, I'm not sure about the other listeners, but for sure, for me, it's uh, definitely useful. So yeah, thanks, thanks for that. Sure.